everybody, this is Pablo with Mattress Makers, and I'm here with my brother Gabe. Hello. In this episode of Anatomy of a Mattress, actually, we may be changing the name to Mattress Autopsy, so we're debating between the two. If you guys have any uh, you know, ideas or if you guys have any preferences, comment below. Tell us, what did you want Anatomy of a Mattress or Mattress Autopsy? What one flows off the tongue better? Which one sounds a little bit better? <laughs> We do things a little bit different today. Um, normally we'll do um, more well-known national brands, but today we are gonna be dissecting the Jerome's Estate Medium Luxury. Yeah, actually we've had this mattress for some time and a customer has been calling us and asking us, hey, have you guys dissected that mattress yet? Open it up. Because what he was experiencing was it's just like there's a sinkhole. You can't see it, but you can definitely feel it. And what was going on with the mattress is he wanted something firmer. And it's just like, he felt like, man, he was just going right through it. And he said it was good for the first six months, but you know after that it just his side of the bed it no longer giving him that support and ended up going with a completely different mattress but he's like hey open it up take a look at it see what what happened and of course he wants us to uh we're gonna send him that you know the link you know once we're done because he's very curious to see where did it go wrong and, and as, as we are yes always interested in seeing where these mattresses fail at as you can see this is a very thick mattress this mattress is huge um, huge, as we would say. Let's measure first how thick this mattress is. Pro tip for you when measuring a mattress, it's always good to do a straight edge on the top and then measure just at the base and then wherever it intersects. About there 16. you go. So this is about a 16 and a quarter inch mattress, which is quite thick. It is, especially on a single sided mattress uh, with one side. So this is a, a lot deeper, a lot thicker mattress. There's a lot more materials in there, which may be probably where the issue was with the customer saying it was dipping a little bit. This is I mean, it's a pretty looking mattress when, it, when, you know, when you look at the top and how much cushion it is. Open like it up. anything, it's what's on the inside that counts. Whether it's people, whether it's books, whether it's mattresses, it's what's on the inside that counts. So let's open it up. Let's open it up. Don't break this one. Yeah, I broke the last blade that we had. So first impression is this is an inner spring mattress, so this is a foam encased mattress. When I say foam encased, means that there's springs in the center part, but foam going around the edge, around the perimeter of the mattress. It does give it a nice firm edge, especially when you feel it on the showroom floor. I'm not a big fan of foam encasements just because over time the edges do tend to break down the foam tends to break down a bit at the edge and could cause it to buckle I feel like you're rolling off the bed so i'm not a huge fan why do you of... think companies usually do that i think it's more for like the aesthetics one you get a tighter smoother edge right instead of the coils but then also what, less wire it does feel and look better on the showroom which yeah. you know people buy with their eyes so if when you have that nice clean look it it is more appealing when you're buying a mattress um, and then when you're filling it, it just has a good story to it. And we know this because we're, we're also in the manufacturing business and we know that it does save money to do a foam encasement rather than a full inner spring. You're saving money, you're saving weight, especially if you're gonna be shipping this. I'm not a huge fan of foam encased mattresses. We do have a foam encased mattress in our showroom, one of them, and, but it's more of an entry level bed you know, to save money. Um, I am a big fan of edge-to-edge -edge coils. I'm doing firmer coils around the edge. And lately I've seen some companies more go to the edge-to-edge -edge coils, but there's still a lot of companies that are doing the foam encasement. If you see a mattress with handles and it's attached by the tape edge, I'll tell you this, this is another pro tip that it's not as strong. As you can see right here, I don't know if Gabe cut this already. Oh wait, I think it was cut. But on the other side, <laughs> yeah, no, the other it, side we're it moving was, it. We're moving it, it, on the other side it ripped. I mean, I can just do like this and it'll rip the mattress, you know, it'll rip the the, hoi the coils or the handles. I don't recommend doing handles with this. I do like having handles on mattress a lot of times, but it should be sewed in to the border of the mattress, which will give it a much stronger handle because it's, this it's, will rip. It is stronger and we've stayed away from handles because the latex ones are typically heavier and we see a handle, we want to use that to move it around and we just get too uh, carried away and sometimes we yank in it and it can start pulling at the fabric and, and just messing it up. So that's a main reason why we um, have stayed away from using handles because of the latex ones. It is really, they are really heavy. So this right here is the core part of the, the bed. Now let's open up the foam and case part. Yeah, let's see how oh, much. Oh, we got some micro coils in here. That is cool. I do like micro coils. Why do you like micro coils? I mean, because micro coils, 
they do offer it a little bit of a different feel than foam where most companies use foam it's just a little different switch up mm -hmm. than just your typical foam on it and because coils do have a lot more resiliency to it i wonder if we could check the gauge on those ones huh yeah that'd be interesting he got a new toy and he has a little gauge finder and that he bought from amazon and now he's checking the gauge of everything now let's get the tape measure let's see how how wide that uh encasement is so starting off it's three inches so, so this... around the perimeter you're gonna have three inches of foam and that's gonna be the edge support of this so when you're sitting on it you feel like that firmer foam um it's three inches and it goes in three inches and then inside of that that's going to be the coils taking off this so we can see from the side so now you could get a little better look at what's in the type of coil system it is using for the main support layer there is a couple of inches of the base we're going to go from the bottom up with the foamy case you have that bottom layer too usually i don't see it is with this thick? much cushion on that bottom layer two inches of foam yeah two layers and about a layer a piece on, on this bottom layer, this base layer. And it's a really firm foam that they use because the coils are gonna be resting on. So they're usually putting a really firm foam on, on the base layer of it. And I don't like having too much on the base layer too, because like I said, a mattress is only good as a weakest link. I say this a lot of times. And if it starts going bad on the bottom layer, it's all gonna trickle up, you know? I would stay away from going with this much on the base layer. So now the, the, the main coils. coil, I would say about an eight inch, seven and three quarter inch, eight inch coil. Yeah, we'll consider eight inch coil. Okay, now let's see the gauge. The gauge is always interesting. It's going to be a 14 gauge. If this is your first time hearing about gauge, is gauge is the thickness of the wire. The lower the number, the thicker the wire. So if you have a 20 gauge versus a 5 gauge, that 5 gauge is going to be a lot thicker wire. Question Rundown. that we get a lot, right? Is yeah, like, what is the gauge? Hey, what, what's, how many coil counts are in there? What's the gauge of the coil? And, and a lot of times those questions are, you know, uh, Ask, just kind of see if we know our you know like what what we're using and a lot of people ask that question without knowing why they're asking it yeah yeah, yeah. we get these questions and like you know i could tell they've done a little bit of homework but then they don't know why and there's mattresses with at least two thousand coils in it but a lot of the coils are like i need something like this this like this mattress probably has close to two thousand coils but it's the it's the double microcoil. stacking, right? You're, it is. You're, you're, you're yeah, you're counting twice. So it doesn't really indicate quality. So you got the base layer that's, you know, that the coils are sitting on at two inches of firm foam. Yep. We got eight inches of coil. Yep. All right. Now what's in that? Now uh, we have a little comfort. bit of, little bit of transition foam right here between the micro coils and the main coil unit. And a lot of that's just because you don't want these to fall inside the coils and right. get hot. And that could cause mattresses to look like they're, they're dipping. So... You know, some, some companies use a little thin layer of material called scrim, you know, but, you know, I've seen a No scrim foam. on this, just No foam. scrim, yeah, no, just the foam on top. I'm really curious to see the gauge of this micro coil. Oh, yeah, let's take a look. Let's Actually, see. I'm going to take one out and see. Look at here, the little micro coil. So you got, yeah, about an inch and a quarter. Yeah. It's just a little bit power pack compressed inside. So let's see, what's the gauge on this one? Uh, let's see, 17. Yeah, it's 17. 17 gauge. 17 gauge wire. Which is a thinner wire. Definitely thinner than the um, the main coil unit. Instead of foam, too, good thing about the springs, it does allow for some airflow as well, right? Instead of using foam, yeah, some cushioning, but also allows for some breathability inside the mattress. And so above that is going to be... You know, it's not really a memory. It doesn't really feel like viscoelastic, though. It's like uh, it's just it's copper-infused foam. Yeah. You know, with a high-density foam, which in polyurethane comparisons... About two inches. Two inches. Uh -huh. I would say this is like a decent polyurethane. Yeah. You know? With copper, it's, I mean, copper, here's the thing with copper. In our opinion, uh, copper is a lot of smoke and mirrors. You know, that's the only thing is because there's a lot of story behind copper. You've seen copper socks. You've seen copper, um, there's even those, copper those bracelets, sheets, right? copper bracelets. bracelets there's, a, there's, you know, copper, those um, little sleeves for your arms or for your legs that I see people using. One thing that irritates me with the, with the industry is there is a lot of smoke and mirrors. And that's with any industry, but that's the story. It gives you a story, it has copper in it. And what the it's, idea is supposed to draw like your heat, they're saying, yeah. and just supposed to be yeah, like healthy for you. But suppose, yeah, yeah, it's it our is. opinion. Like we say, our opinion <laughs> is that uh, a lot, a lot of a uh, lot of fluff in it. But yeah, no, no, right. and that's uh, we because we get phone companies and people are always trying to sell us to market this kind of stuff to us. And but think about it, like once you start adding the different layers of foam material, your sheets, your bedding, your mattress protector, you don't get any of the benefit of the copper, you know. But 
But as far as the density goes, I actually do like the density of this because I could tell it is a higher density than just regular cheap, you know, super soft foam or polyurethane foam. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I will give them that. So copper, it doesn't make it better in our opinion. But here's something really cool, which I actually really do like is they have latex on the top. Actually, they have two layers of latex. Two like, layers. That little thin layer of, which I don't know why they would do, maybe so they could just say they have two layers of latex. Yeah, let's see. I mean, see. This, this little layer is not really doing much benefit. No, maybe, this okay. almost looks like a quarter, quarter inch. Yeah. A quarter inch of latex on the, the, the small piece, which uh, doesn't do much. Looks like Talalay latex, which is actually good. Um, just looking at here, like the best, material in this bed right here is this latex and i would definitely say i don't know the price point of this mattress because this mattress is about three years old now was it 2019 but this definitely would be considered a higher end mattress because it has the latex in it and the micro coils so we have two inches of this uh, copper fused foam about an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters of this latex so this is the pressure point now this is a medium mattress but there's a lot going on here there's a lot going on with this mattress, with the coils, the, these layers, the micro coils. So there's a lot of different little layers on here. Now, not that it's bad, but here's the thing. When you start adding a lot of this stuff in it, it just opens yourself up to more issues. There's more that could go wrong with the mattress. And hence where he started to have that dipping, right? He said, what, yeah. was, what was the customer complaining about? It, it, it just lost its support, he felt like. It was just, now you're just going right through it. And it was mainly on his side. You know, when they move over to the middle, you know, it's a lot firmer. It's like, it felt better, but still not, you know, it, that ended up going to shot, you know, about, you know, a couple, few weeks to a month. So that's the main pressure point materials, pressure point layers, comfort layers right here. There's a lot also going on in the panel. So this part, the quilted part right here, you know that's very plush as well. So let's let's open this up. There is some some cotton in here too. Yeah, in interesting to interesting, see where yeah. that's actually in the quilting because it looks like just on the outside. Yeah, I don't know if the specs that they like advertise with cotton, but maybe there's companies that will just add a little bit of material in there just to say that it has it. You know, whether it's wool or cotton, even silk, you don't get really any, any advantages of having it. So let's see the uh, inside. They're getting more foam right stacked on each other. Yeah. And you probably look in at there's an inch here in this layer. And then in this layer right here is another inch. So two inches of foam in the quilting again. Some more, you know, more padding, right? That affects the feel of the mattress. Can affect the breathability. And going back to the story of copper, right? If, if copper is supposed to draw the heat and so it's supposed to be good for you, look how far down in the mattress it is. You got total, so two inches of foam. Two inches of the quilting. Yeah, quilting in the foam, but and then inch. about an inch and a half on the latex, and then you got the copper right underneath this. So three and a half inches until you get to the copper, so there's not gonna be a whole lot of benefit. If there is any benefit you'll get from the copper, right, in, in that mattress. Again, we've done another video on like less is more. So this is where you want most of your back support to come from, is from the coils of the mattress. That's where you, I mean, it's not all gonna come from there, but the majority of that support is meant to come from the core of the mattress. When you're like five, six inches away from, when you're on the top and you're away from this, you're not getting much of that benefit anymore to the coils too. Mm -hmm. So what happens is these layers on the top are supporting you rather than the, the support layer. And that will, over time, those layers are gonna break down a lot faster than this. And then over time, you start noticing the mattress dip in. It doesn't feel the same. It's not giving as much support. Mm -hmm. So. The, our philosophy has been that less is more when it comes to mattresses. Like the less, you know, you still could get good support, good comfort, but you still want to be close to that support layer. In our opinion, right? So opinion. let's see how it feels. Gabe, let's All right, let's do, the, let's do the test. Let's, see how, let's do the test. And you're probably going to have to take a nice hose down. We'll hose you down <sighs> after you laying on this mattress because it looks pretty funky. Now, this so. wasn't from the customer. This was just in our, you know, moving it around yeah, yeah, on yeah, de yeah. delivery yeah, this, this has been a warehouse for a couple of months and yeah it's gotten dirty in the warehouse i would say it's pretty soft um feel wise from a scale of one to ten ten being the firmest one being the softest i would say man this is probably at least the way it feels right here number five maybe a five right in the middle you give it a five and eh, maybe even a little bit softer than that that's over over on that spot and i could definitely feel that sinkhole over there over here it's uh little bit firmer but still it's it's a pretty soft mattress if i had a guess i would with all the padding and 
and four maybe. Well, I would have given maybe even a three or four. But here's the thing: there's no exact science when it comes to mattress firmness, and I say this probably on, on every almost every video that take mattress reviews and someone's take on their mattress firmness with a grain of salt because games what 180 185 uh-huh someone 110 pounds you get that's gonna lay on it they're gonna feel have a totally different experience some of 300 pounds is gonna have a totally different experience but at least gives you some kind of idea of how the mattress feels some of them are harder to harder to see like our one of our last ones we did we can actually there was a it was quite evident of where the problem was so that's the inside of the jerome's estate two mattress now I'm just looking at each layer by layer can't really see what layer faltered and which one just failed on the customer. I do think is happening is there's so many layers from the support layer. What do we say about closest five, six inches in that ballpark? Yeah. Yep. And what's happening is that um, each layer is softening up and then that just compounds over time. And then he feels like you're really sinking in. You're not getting the support. So that's what I believe is what happened. Layers, I mean, at least the, the material seems like it's actually pretty good quality material. Yeah. But all it takes a little bit for it to, to soften up. Yeah, and that's why we go back to it less is more. You know, if it, you could get like an inch or an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch off in each layer, and that compounds. And then you end up having a inch or inch and a half dip in the mattress. Like I said, like this is not a bad build bed as far as the materials go. The materials are actually pretty dang solid. I actually like the materials that they use. I like the latex. If you're going to use polyurethane, I do like the high density part. And then I even like microcoils. You know, there's just a lot going on here, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that was the issue. Because, I mean, I could see, like, just from here, it's probably hard to see it on the camera. I could see a little bit of inconsistencies with the the dipping. But that's yeah. going to be natural, though, right? That's going to yeah, break as the mattress breaks in. I mean, it could be a mattress that's 500 bucks or even a $50,000 mattress, right? They all have that breaking in period and yeah. like, some of that body impression. Yep, yep. And, uh, yeah, and this, this mattress... If it's made in the U.S., it's made by Diamond Mattress. I look on the law label. Diamond Mattress, they actually make a good bed. I actually like Diamond Mattress. Out of other mattress bakers out there, I actually do like Diamond Mattresses beds that, that they do and their um, the quality of the materials that they use. Um, I don't like it how I, I see on Jerome's advertising. A lot of times they'll say that they make, Jerome's makes their own mattresses, which... It's private label. Really, they really don't make their own mattresses. They used to probably back in the day, but now it's more made by um, a private label company like like a Diamond Mattress. Overall, you know, the materials are decent. There's just a lot going on. Yeah. So. And that's why there was that premature uh, breakdown. Down. Yeah. 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 So, so if you guys, so. you know, like what you see and hear, please comment below, ask questions. Um, also, if you guys want to send us some mattresses or a mattress that you want us to open up, I mean, feel free to ship one out to us, and we'll open up, give you a shout out. We'll, we'll make we'll make you famous. <laughs> yes, and if you yeah, if you are on the mattress hunt, and you just you know you need a little bit more help on mattress shopping, we have a guide, a little mattress shopping guide you could download. And on our website, we have a lot of other questions that we answer. So yeah, hope this helped you guys, and I hope you found it a little bit interesting. Open up mattresses. So, so join with us next time, and uh, we'll see you guys. Thank you guys for joining us.